Good afternoon. Yeah, I'm really excited to be here again, and also it's finally my turn, meaning it's close to the <laughs> to to end of the day, right? Uh, anyway, uh, really glad to have this opportunity to share with you uh, some of our most recent progress in the RTC technology. And my topic today is about utilizing deep learning to help optimizing video encoder. <clears throat> uh, a study by Cisco predicts video will occupy 87% of total internet traffic in year 2021. And among, the, uh, among that, Live internet video will increase 15 fold from year 2017 to year 2021 by. <clears throat> and behind this rapid growth is the crucial enabler, the video encoder. And the, its progress over the years has enabled this rapid growth of internet video. And uh, video encoder compresses raw video data and convert it to a compressed B stream. We, over the years, we have fa been facing constantly the challenge of trying to achieve more compression and last year, we were asked to get 30% more compression without degree, degrading the video quality and without switching to a more complex video coding standard. And in real-time video communication, we don't have luxury of utilizing many of the offline encoder tools, such as multiple pass video encoding. So we started off by looking into areas where we can find some more redundancy in the existing B streams encoded by our standard video decoder. So standard video, the modern video encoders are actually transform based and an image space picture X is processed and converted to a transform domain and is followed by quantization and the variable length encoding to produce the final B string. On the reconstruction path, it is going through the inverse quantization and the inverse transform and then back to the image space X hat. Then a distortion between those two is calculated. And it is combined with the bit rate to form the objective function. This objective function is minimized to decide, to make the decisions for all the decision, all the encoding mode decisions. And the distortion D is usually measured by mean square error or mean absolute error. However, measures like this doesn't always agree with our visual systems, which means optimizing MSE doesn't always give you improved visual quality. So researchers have been looking into our human visual systems, trying to take advantage of our uh, visual system properties. So it has been known our eyes and the brains process different information in different ways. A few examples. For example, our eyes tend to low pass filter high frequencies more than lower frequencies. Look at the picture on the right going from left to right, as the frequency going higher and higher, it's becoming harder and harder for us to tell the difference of the features, the vertical lines. And also our eyes respond to the luminance non-linearly. So in the darkest range and in the brightest range, any change is harder to tell than 
the changes in the middle range of the luminance. And also, the RS can mask some of the distortions, but they are to various degrees. For example, we are more sensitive to distortions around the edge, but we are not that sensitive to distortions at complex texture areas. So encoding technology trying to take advantage of the visual properties is called perceptual video coding, PVC. Many of the PVC methods trying to introduce a explicit, explicit transfer function, which trying to approximate the human visual properties, as I just mentioned. And with this, G would transfer X and X hat to the so-called perceptual domain. And now, the distortion is measured in the transfer domain instead of the picture domain. And it replaces the, or, the original distortion in the objective function. Now, this new object function is minimized to make the, all the encoding decisions. Well, <coughs> positive result is obtained, and roughly about 10% more coding gain is achieved, which is, which is good. And however, it is actually very difficult to define a very accurate transfer function. And well, it, many of this may be just a rough approximation. We suspect there is still some redundancy left in the bit stream coded by, by even by this G-based PVC measure. So and in the past few years, we have been on deep neural network is actually very good at capturing visual information. So it may be very good at exploiting this human visual system properties as well. And therefore, it may help achieve some more additional compression. So we, our in our design, we just simply adopt the convolutionary neural network. And it turns out a very simple architecture with a few layers of the convolutional blocks actually works, which is great for mobile applications. And eventually, we implemented all our models in, in cell phone, in laptop, and benefit from this simplicity of architectures. But the hard part is actually the training is about the training data set. So we generate a huge number of image patches. And preferably, those patches uh, represent all the interesting content. And for each of these patch, we find the just noticeable distortion for them and use as the labeled data to, to train the network. And uh, we expected to get some very good results, more compression and uh, in distinguishable video quality. Yeah, so we get significantly more compression, but we find there are issues. Just like this picture shows. On the right hand side is uh, a reconstruct picture using the deep learning by based PVC. And on the cheek area, we find a lot of blocking artifacts, let's enlarge it. And let's see, uh, yeah, it's visible here, great. So, I mean, not, <laughs> not the encoder is great. It's great to be able to see the, what I'm talking about. So the reason is because the, the encoder has a quantization, right? We, we all know uh, compression is achieved through quantization. So quantization gives this artifacts, and our initial design doesn't take into consideration of the encoder quantization. We end up by trying to uh, modulate the JND according to the quantization level. And after this, the blocking artifacts 
is removed or, or largely removed uh, yeah, compared to the initial version. So <coughs> I'd like to s spend a minute to talk about how we evaluate this perceptual video encoding. And we use double blind testing, and we invite more than uh, 20 subjects, untrained subjects, or, or some they may be trained. Uh, we, we don't care. And we provide 90 PVC coded video clips and 90 corresponding non PVC coded video clips and ask them to give the mean opinion score. And then the difference of the MOS score is calculated. And in the literature or in the community, uh, degradation of 5% is usually considered uh, very good. Here is our result. Uh, uh, the average DMOS is less than 1%, which means quality is kept. And the average bitrate dropped by more than 23%. So we get more compression. And that is 30% a year, right? So then we apply it to our typical thing of uh, meeting thing and uh, or head and shoulder and conference, those kind of like, uh, then we, we, we do get 30%. Bit rate reduction. Uh, I'd like to show you a demo, actually. I run a, uh, run a real program, which is implemented in my, in my, in my laptop. Let me show you. OK. So in, in, in this demo, uh, there are two areas which we can pay attention to. And on the right hand side is real time bit rate. The, the curve indicates the bit rate change. And on the right, left hand side is, is the video. And I will switch on and off the PVC and ask you to, to check whether you can detect the quality difference. And also pay attention to the bit rate change when the PVC is on and off. In order to make it a little bit content a little more interesting, I, I will keep moving a little bit. Otherwise, uh, a static thing is not that. So, um, <coughs> OK. This is before, after, before, uh, usually around 6, after it dropped the green line, before. After, so, and uh, yeah, so tell me if you can tell the p video quality difference on, off, on. So, so that's the, uh, a brief demo here. Then come back to my, come back to my PPT. Yeah, this is probably the last page. And uh, yeah, well, this, uh, yeah, it's already implemented in, our, uh, in some of the cell phone, iOS, Android, and uh, also, also uh, the laptop. Uh, and <clears throat> yeah, so the model is so small, so we, we are able to like, support uh, 720p 30 frames in real time just using uh, GPU, implemented by GPU. And uh, for some of the high-end iPhones, we implement it in, in MPU whenever there's an NPU. So what's next? So we are going to continue to work on video encoding and make it more content aware, because not all contents are created equal. Some are more interesting than others. So we are trying to make the more interesting ones encoded better, while we can degrade gracefully a little bit about those non-interesting errors. And also, we know there are many other places we can make use of deep learning to help. Uh, for example, video quality enhancement, uh, like get rid of the encoding artifacts, the, the blockness I just mentioned, and also the mosquito noise kind of thing. Or even in dark sense, is the camera is subject to some random Gauss, Gaussian noise, white noise. That can be reduced by uh, uh, deep learning algorithm. And also in our business, actually, 
uh, content moderation is also very important, and there have been solutions by uh, those uh, famous companies like Microsoft and Google, and uh, and uh, we are also developing a in-house design for this because uh, because of the uh, like some of the regulations, so need need to deploy it in every region separately. Yeah. Anyway, uh, this concludes my presentation. Thank you.